Thank you. I want to thank the uh, Entertainment Industry Foundation for inviting me to join you here today to launch this new initiative designed to make service a national priority. I also want to thank our First Lady, Ms. Michelle Obama, for her commitment to volunteerism and her determined leadership by example in making community and national service an American priority. Thanks to uh, the Governor of California and, of course, the First Lady of California, my friend Maria Shriver, for being here today. It's Maria Shriver's family who have such a long service and tradition of activism that's been an inspiration to the generations. And I want to give my greatest and loudest thanks to all of you for attending this National Conference on Volunteerism. As we launch the United We Serve program, now just by nature, just by nature of this convention, if I'm up here speaking to you, I know I'm preaching to the converted. You've either embraced as a career path or as a charitable endeavor the needs, the challenges, and the satisfaction that volunteering can bring to any number of topics that we face today. Many different roads have brought us to this destination. Each of us has his or her own unique story to tell. My becoming this involved in philanthropy took shape as the co-owner of an arena football team called the Philadelphia Soul. Well, it might seem like an odd choice to some, but not to me. You see, well, before I bore you with the details of how I bought the franchise, I have to tell you that why I did it was because I thought that sport was a unique way to make a difference in our community. You see, from our inception, I didn't care if you liked Bon Jovi. I didn't care if you liked football. I believe that everybody thinks that they've got soul, hence the name. And while we were determined to win on the field, it was winning off the field that was just as important to me. We were looking for men of character, not characters. This was going to be not only a safe and affordable place for a family to come and root for the home team, but also a place where sponsors would be proud to spend their dollars. So before we played it down, before we sold a ticket, I went to sponsors, both big and small, and I explained to them that I intended to make a difference in sports ownership and in our community. And in our first couple of years, whether it was a foster home who needed a playground, a hospice who needed a check, or if it was a local covenant house who needed some beds, if the soul could be there, we were. By the spring of 2005, our focus became clearer. We became involved in the issue of affordable housing and in our desire to break the chains of poverty in and around the area, the Philadelphia Soul Foundation was born. Initially, we partnered with organizations like Habitat for Humanity and Help USA. Yeah, they're both great organizations, thank you. But it was the mentoring of Sister Mary Scullion in Project Home that we are most grateful. It was Sister Mary that taught me the importance of job training and service providing. These elements were going to be key to the success in and around each of our builds. That something seemingly as basic as computer skills are in fact the difference between the quality and the quantity of food that you provide for your family. Now it's been four and a half years since we've begun our work and uh, thus far we've helped to fund 151 units of affordable housing. I'm very proud of that. We're just getting started, not just in Philadelphia, but also in places as diverse as Los Angeles, Denver, Detroit, Brooklyn, and of course in my home state of New Jersey. Well, I didn't come here, I didn't come here today to talk about me. In fact, I came here to talk about the power of we. It's a, uh, it's a term that I use often and underlined because the power of we, we, are all aware of these trying economic times. Money's tight everywhere, and yet the homeless are still homeless. The hungry are still hungry. But there's hope for the hopeless. Because volunteerism is on the rise in America. Maybe it's due to the economy, but maybe it's because we're reminded that we're all in this together. But whether it's the president's signing of the Service Act of America, in the, name, in the name of Maria's uncle, Edward Kennedy, or the nearly 5,000 of us here today, each of us believes that we can do it. 
But as President Obama said, we can't do it alone. Government needs to work in concert with nonprofits, corporations, and individuals to make what I believe can be a noticeable difference in the place that we live. Now, the cynical say we can't fix everything, to which I respond, but if each of the hopeful can fix just one thing, imagine. Today shines a... Thank you. Today shines a spotlight, a spotlight on this starting point. It's day one of a new season, an era built on the foundation of initiatives like AmeriCorps and City Year. Today we build on that foundation with United We Serve, but we're going to need to sustain that energy captured today throughout the summer's initiative. Maybe it's going to be tax credits. Maybe it's going to be educational credits. Uh, maybe it's just going to be a roundtable discussion with the the wiser and the elder. Remember, Mrs. Obama not only planted those seeds in the White House garden, but she, in fact, nurtures it. So after the photo op, you got to remember, America, roll up your sleeves, because it's time to get our hands dirty. This journey starts here, and it starts now with the first step. President Obama said, yes, we can. I'm here to say, yes, we will. And someday when we look back, we're going to say, yes, we did. Thank you. Thank you for your hard work. Thank you for inspiring me and countless others. Thank you for showing the country and the world that tomorrow starts now. We're going to be the ones that made volunteerism hip together. And with the power of we, we can start a revolution one soul at a time. Thank you.